Now I would like to introduce our graduate student speaker, Lisa Rome. Lisa is graduating today with a master's in environmental leadership. The environmental leadership program is designed to train students in how to lead organizational and community transformation toward an environmentally just and sustainable society. Lisa's studies at Naropa have fostered her curiosity about the relationship of health and sustainability. For her final project, she chose to work with a company called Matrix Works, which focuses on creating new cultures of creativity, nourishment, and innovation in the workplace by using the power of small groups, believing that people are basically good, that nothing happens in isolation, and that living systems can move toward health, wholeness, compassion, love, and joy. In taking a whole systems view of the world, Lisa says she seeks inner, relational, and planetary, planetary transformation towards a world that works for all. We are happy to have her as our graduate student speaker. Lisa. more fun to be able to see all of you. <laughs> if you've ever held a newborn child in your arms, you likely understand the natural resonance that occurs when you look into its eyes, inspiring feelings of intense responsibility, gentleness, and potential. This intelligent design has purpose. Because when a human infant emerges from the womb, it is still in a fragile state. Needing... <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, needing around-the-clock warmth, nurturing, and love. A human baby lives by its ability to connect. On the other hand, when an infant animal is born in the wild, it quickly learns his role in the web of life. It learns how to be present and adapt to its environment, how to stand on its own feet, and when to rest. At some point, each of us in this room has been in need of this maternal connection, and some of us have chosen to re-enter into a womb of sorts at Naropa, what we call the womb of wisdom, and we have spent the past years getting in touch with our true nature, our true calling to our life's purpose. We've come to realize our capacity for love and connection and for claiming our evolution of spirit, power, and purpose. Now, I believe that this cultivation of authentic nature it is, what, is what is going to help us in our first steps in the world. In bringing forth our genuine hearts, we are ready to stand on our two feet and adapt to the necessary evolution. As animals, we are able to see our role in the web of life. And as humans, we have the special and dangerous gift of creating that role. Now at this point in human history, we have created some amazing things, like energy that harnesses the power of nature, communication technology, social innovation structures, health sciences, and brewed coffee. <laughs> and, as humans, we've also created some scary things, like nuclear weapons, the carbon crisis, schools that are unsafe for our children, and the illusion of separation from one another. At this point in our human story, we are called to remember our role in the web of life, the impact our modern choices have on our ability to slow down and thrive in the environment. And we are, cultural, we are called to culturally adapt to both scientific and intuitive feedback. We have come here to Naropa 
to respond to the challenges and opportunities of our time. We have come to this nourishing environment to wake up to the web of connection and to claim our role in life as both creator and steward. Now, seven years ago, I claimed a role in my community through a bat mitzvah, which is a Jewish rite of passage. And this was particularly special to me because it was seven years after the typical age that one goes through the ceremony. And I had chosen it intentionally as my own path, just as many of us have chosen to come here. And the similar kind of threshold marks a good deed into a new sense of freedom, but also community responsibility. And I stood at a very similar podium, except I was singing in an entirely different language, <laughs> about a passage that I really didn't understand until I came here today just as the ripples of today are unknown in this moment. I sang about letting the land rest every seven years. And at the time I thought, well, it's a nice metaphor for biblical times, but I don't really understand what it means in the context of my modern life. And looking back as I stand before you today, I realize it was a premonition of sorts for the work I am called to do in the world. I was reclaiming a lost part of who I am through my family's traditions. And these traditions take on an entirely different meaning in light of the global challenges today. There is so much to be done in our world. And we do not have the time or resources to blindly take action that we will later have to fix. The time for letting the land lie fallow is long overdue, and now is the time for rest. On a large scale, our skies cannot hold the factories and planes that pollute it, and now is the time for rest. Our land cannot live with constant chemicals and climate change and big monocultures. Now is the time for rest. Our rivers and streams and oceans cannot process the waste we let into them. And there is enough water to go around if we let it rest. Interpersonally, we all hurt from conflict. Humans are wired for this connection. And in order to feel safe on this earth, it is time to put down our wars, our weapons, and our grudges, and let one another rest. Personally, when faced with the pressure to succeed, to buy lots of things and to fit in and to be busy, <laughs> now is the time for rest. Our spirits hurt from forgetting our natural capacity for this love, our cultural traditions and our connection to the web of life. And now is the time to let ourselves rest. There is a dynamic tension between tradition and evolution and we find synapses between our roots and our dreams. In resting, we are able to see what is vital. During my time at Naropa, I've learned to tap into this need for rest and personal evolution by sitting in nature. And when I go and sit by that creek, I feel humbled by how much I have yet to learn from this earth. But I'm also humbled by how equipped I really am to greet this moment in human history. And it's sometimes hard to understand the results of our time here at Naropa. My dad often jokes that I attend the Naval Academy because I spend my time contemplating my belly button. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and as a Naropa student, I've cultivated an amazing capacity to hold these difficulties of our time. I've learned how to be with what truly is and I've learned how to return to what's essential. But none of us are here to save the world, or anyone for that matter. We're here for the evolution of our own spirits, the evolution of the ways that we relate to one another and the ways that we relate to our planet. Our future depends on our ability to connect with nature and evolve. The seeds we plant and tend to today are the unfoldings of the world to come. 
What the earth and its people need now is to be treated with the potential and gentleness we would give a baby. Now I invite you today to imagine what it would be like if you looked yourself in the eye, your enemy in the heart, and your world as a whole, and let it rest. I invite you to consider the seeds you are planting for the next seven years of your lives, and the world you are bringing forth for the seventh generation. Because when we let things rest, life comes through on its own. Like the seed that grows through the cracks in the pavement, or a renaissance that can't be controlled, or a love that arises from the core of our being when we stop trying. When we rest in our true nature, we can allow the intelligence of evolution to shine through. Thank you. <laughs>